so that we can officially begin. Hello and welcome to Magic Horse Class, class, class. Today we're going to draw this little pixie pegasus, pixie alicorn, and I want you to take a look and see that the horse is only going to take up the bottom half of your paper. You need some room at the top for the wings. So when we start drawing, I'm going to give myself a guideline so that I remember not to go above that line and save that space at the top. If you don't want to draw the guideline, that's fine. Just remember, we got to keep this horse on the bottom half. So I'm going to go ahead and just very, very lightly, I don't even know if the camera will pick it up, very lightly give myself a line that basically cuts my paper in half. You can also see that the wind is blowing the mane and the tail to the left. So we have to save some space over there on the left. And I'll start my horse head just a little bit in the middle with a circle about the size of a quarter. erase anything on the inside. And this horse's head is pointing down, so I'm going to put the nose circle on the bottom. Very small, but it is going to be touching. Maybe about the size of a large pea. We'll connect those two circles up with a curving line on the bottom and a straighter line on the top. Erasing out the inside so that we have one big shape. very close to the head, I'm going to give myself a large circle for the body, or at least one side of the body. That would be this part right in here. Wait, wait, please. I can pause for a little bit. Camp I don't cue. Who's the camp I don't cue? I'm not sure what you mean. Next, I'm going to connect the head to the body. Curving line on the top. Smaller curving line on the bottom. And then we can erase out that shape 
but I want to leave a little overlapping line for the cheek, the jaw right there. Next, we're going to add another circle for the other half of the body. We'll be touching the first circle in about the same size. connect up those shapes. A little bit flatter line on top. And this line's going to curve into that circle. And then we'll start adding the legs. Let's start with this one right in front. We have a line for the shoulder that crosses over the neck. Can you wait, please? Wait for a little bit, yep. And from that shoulder line, we'll continue down to the tip of the hoof. Just one big curve for now.
And then we'll start looking for those shapes of the leg. We've got that wedge on top. The part where it bends. Skinny rectangle. And then the hoof goes diagonally forward. So starting at the top, I'm going to make that wedge shape. Getting a little bit skinnier as I go down, a little thicker as it goes up to the body. After that, I put in a little oval or circle just to help me remember. It gets thicker right there, just like on your fingers where there's bone and where it bends, it gets a little thicker and then it gets skinnier and then it gets a little thicker again. Same thing on horses. And I have a rectangle shape. back of this rectangle is that little notch in the back and then the hoof goes a little bit diagonally forward. And we can erase the inside. Make a little bump out where it bends. If you want to, you don't have to. You might notice My Little Ponies doesn't make this distinction where it bends. We'll have a little overlapping line right at the top. Tonight, I'll be eating fried avocado tacos. Thank you. Ooh, you gonna eat. Then we have this other leg that is bending and is covered up by the front leg. Remember that's overlapping. Overlapping is the best. It always makes your drawings look better. So I'm going to sketch this shape right here. I have a line that goes diagonally forward, tiny line that goes down, and another line that goes back. On the other side, same little straight line there, diagonal line going back, diagonal line going back. Oh, 
ahead and you can log out, but um, I'll be back. Okay. Next, we're going to draw these back legs, which you can see get covered up a lot by the tail. But we're going to go ahead and draw them in just so that we know where they are. So I'm going to start by making a line that goes from kind of the tummy area a little bit backwards. You can erase anything on the inside. And we'll come down from the circle. And this is going to reverse curve into that little notch in the back that we're always drawing. Sometimes it helps if you have a guideline. Remember this leg and the front leg are going to be on the same level on the paper. So I need this leg to reach all the way down to this line. So I'll take that front line and just continue it down, 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 and forward for the hook. And I know the back is going to be diagonal also. And there will be that little notch. A little cutout shape. My pencil. And I'll pause right here while you get your leg done. Remember though, it's gonna be covered up by a lot of tail, so don't worry too much about it. The more important part is gonna be this part down here that isn't covered by tail. And the other leg gonna be higher on the paper, not even. So I'm gonna give myself a little guideline And again, I'm going to look at this white shape in between the legs that looks a little bit like a shark fin poking up. And I'll try making that same kind of shape. You help me get started. Remember that hoof has to end on that line. And then we'll connect up the back. Again, don't worry too much about it because it's gonna be covered up by tail.
And let's go ahead and work on the face a little more. We need a nostril. You can draw a little watermelon seed in there. You can add a mouth wrapping around, curving. And then I'm going to put in a little leaf shape for the eye. We'll put in part of a circle. You can add a little thicker line if you want eyelashes. My eyelashes are too even though. I want them to be uneven so they look a little better. And if it's easier, you can always rotate your paper until the eye is right side up. Might be easier to do that way. On the other side of the head, we can't see the eye, but we usually have this little bump to indicate where the other eye would be on that side. So I'm just going to add that little angle. You can add the eyelashes on that side if you want. And then for the ear, we're going to draw one side with one line. The other side gets a little bit of an S curve. And we erase the inside. If you want to add a line that separates the pink part, the inside of the ear from the outside of the ear, you can draw a little skinny raindrop or line to help separate it. But we won't be able to see that other ear at all, so I'm not gonna bother drawing that one. 
let's go ahead and do the horn. It'll probably be easier if you just rotate your paper until the horn goes straight up. And we can decide how long we want it to be, how thick we want it to be. With just those first two lines. You can leave it smooth, or if you want to make it twisty, we'll add some diagonal stripes all the way down to the end. Evenly spaced looks the best. And then we'll add a tiny curve to each section. Tiny, tiny curve, not a big one. If your unicorn horn looks like it's made out of bubbles, that's too much curve. We only want a tiny, tiny little curve. On both sides. And if you want to, you can end the horn with a curved line where it is attached to the head. going to add these butterfly wings next. The lower wing is going to be in front of the upper wing, so we're going to start with this one first. Big, big curve. And then over here, it's going to end at almost a point. I'll make mine a little bit wider. And notice I add my new lines first, then I get rid of the ones I don't want. Mine almost goes straight up first. This one almost goes flat sideways and then it comes into a big curve. Yep, these are butterfly wings. This is a teeny, teeny, tiny little pegasus. Pixie pegasus, pixie alicorn, one of those. The other one is going to have a big curve, so I'll back up on my pencil so it's easier to just move my wrist or move my fingers and have that nice big curve come out. Round off the tip and come all the way back to the other wing. Other side is super easy. We just follow that same line and curve it behind because overlapping is awesome. 
I'm gonna pause right there while you guys work on your butterfly wings. And we'll keep going at Right, next we're going to work on the tail. Before we start drawing, take a look at the same thing we always do. Big curve, little curve. Big curve, little curve. So I'll start with this line on top, do a big curve. Big curve, little curve. that little curve I'll drop down and do another little curve And on the other side, I'm just going to do a tiny, tiny curve and then go into a big one. And we can erase the parts of the legs that are on the inside of the, the shape. Legs that are on the can you wait, please? Yep. Tonight. I'll be eating fried avocado tacos. I like avocado and I like tacos, but fried avocado tacos just don't sound good.
We'll keep going down. And around that little curl. Should be really skinny by the time you get down here. Lines very close together. This last little piece is a little crescent moon shape where this last little curl is curling around. I guess more like a comma, backwards comma, single quote. One of these things that's so rounded on one side, pointy on the other. And we'll add a few more overlapping lines to show the twistiness. From this outside line, we're going to overlap to the inside. Not touching, just overlapping. And we'll overlap a little bit on the bottom side, just a little bit. And we'll overlap a little bit right there. And we have most of the tail done. We just need this one little stray hair that's wandering off on its own. And it's the same kind of thing. We do a big curve and a little curve. We'll do another little twisty raindrop on the end to show it curling over. And then draw the other side going right back up to where it came from. Thicker at the top, skinnier at the bottom. Erasing out anything on the inside of the shape. Yep, I'm waiting right here for you guys to work on your tails. We'll keep going at 444. Thank you. 
And then the main. We're going to start on the bottom portion. Oops, just meant to go a little closer. This bottom portion first. So it's pretty easy. We're just going to do a couple of curving overlapping uh, curve. lines. Already done. Already done. Awesome. So I've got one, two, three curves on the bottom. This last one's gonna start out big and then curve small. Curve small. Can I keep that right now? Uh, how about in 10 minutes? Uh, that will work. Awesome. And then I'll do another teeny tiny little reverse curve. So we've got this nice little twisty hair in the wind. Next one starts up at the face and we'll come down and touch that part right there and keep going. Flipping it around to a little curve. Then to make it look like it's overlapping, I'm going to add another curved line as negative space, meaning I'm not going to color in here with the hair color. That's air. Then from above the horn, it's going to go right behind the horn. And go out. And the next one, we're going to start above the ear and go down into a little hook shape. That's this part right here going down. So now we're going to come all the way back around into a curve. Really loopy. And end in a tiny curl. Then for the other side, we start with one of those hooks. around until it bumps into something probably the horn and if this hair is too hard you want to do your own hair that's perfectly fine too you don't always have to copy me the rest of the hair is just more at overlapping lines so I'm going to curve it back into the neck 
curve it back into the neck and then it gets covered up by those butterfly wings. For inside the butterfly wings, you can do whatever kind of designs you want. If you want to do hearts or stars or moons, that's up to you. I'm going to do some really long raindrop shapes. Round on one end, pointy on the other. And another one. And another one until I run out of space. And then on the edge, I'll put some spots. Just random little circles. Some small, some big. And again, if you want to instead, you can put hearts, you can put stars. That's up to you. You can do the My Little Pony cutie mark. We have four more minutes to add whatever little extra things that you want, little sparkles. And in three more minutes, we'll start sharing and Fusi will go first. Two more minutes. Don't forget, Sunday is the last day to turn in artwork for the art show. A lot 
the times we don't get to see the finished version because we run out of time so it's nice to see everybody's finished artwork or sometimes still unfinished artwork in the art show Just one more minute and then we're going to take turns sharing. That was a fast minute. My clock says 4.55, so I'm going to remove my spotlight. And Fusi, are you ready to share? No, Fusi's not ready to share? Well, anybody who's ready to share it then, go ahead. How do we make gold again? You need brown, orange, and yellow. I'll show it super quick while you guys are still working on your artwork. Let's say you have your hoof. To make it gold, you just divide it up into a skinny section and a big section with your brown. Usually it's a darker brown than that, but that's the only brown I have right now. Orange on the sides. And we leave a skinny little bit in the middle, and that's the one we color yellow. Like I say, it looks a little better if you have a darker brown. Is this brown darker? Oh yeah, this brown's a little darker. All right, who's ready to share? Here we go. Let me replace the spotlight. Ooh, look at that. Lovely. Who's the guy holding the hammer, though? <laughs> That's a demon holding a hammer. I'm going to kill them. Oh. Very nice. Did you want to share fully? Nope. All right, we're going to go over to Callista. Ooh, look how pretty. I like what? Ice ones. I like it. Ooh, another one. Look at that pretty mane and tail flowing in the wind. Excellent work, guys. How about Tracy or Natalie? Now, Let's Fully's say... ready to share. Oh, I got Fully's Tracy ready. first, but then we'll go to Fully. Ooh, that's another pretty one. Oh, wow, though. I love it. Whoa, you got a fan right there. <laughs> and then go ahead, Fully. Ooh, so pretty. I like that rainbow. It looks like a rainbow effect you got on the wing there. And then we've got Natalie. No, yes. Yeah, let me replace Spotlight. Oh, nope, it disappeared. What happened to it? Try it again, Natalie. Somehow it would not let me share yours. Cute. That's what I got. You know that. You got the new man. No? no? No. Okay, all that's left is Frank then. You forgot to cut the new man. Let me replace Spotlight. Here we go. Ooh. Yeah! So pretty. Yeah! I love it. That's super it's beautiful. It's super beautiful. It's exactly the time. In fact, Frank, on Wednesday's class, I had a question on why does Frank Stone draw so good? 
I said practice, but if you want to add to that answer, go right ahead. <laughs> yep, there's lots of practice. Excellent job, everybody. Well, today is our last magical horse class, and I have to tell you that we are also running out of funding. We did not get approved for more funding. So this is the last Friday Zoom class until we hear otherwise. So I unfortunately will not be seeing you next Friday, but I hope I'll see you on the art meet, or not art meet, on the art class on Wednesday or at the art show, which I think is also Wednesday after, after class. Yeah. Bye. Thank you for drawing. Bye. And yes, you can take a picture of mine. Bye. 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 Bye.